are limited on time. Uh, they've added a whole API in there. So from code, you can create all of your animation controllers. You can essentially populate everything we're going to do today all through code uh, without having to do anything in the UI. Maybe if you wanted to write animation extensions, things like that. Uh, but just maybe to enhance your workflow. It's not something that I use on a uh, on any basis. I don't write the code to create my animation controllers. I like to click in my UI to do that. But I just want to tell you that in Unity 5, there's now a whole API to script all this if you want. Um, so first, let's look at uh, animation state behaviors. And if we look at our project here, let's go to my main scene and run it. And you can see the baking kind of happened, it was happening in the lower right hand corner and got cut off as soon as I click play here. A little bit of music there. And notice, if I fire, the animation, like the ball doesn't come out of his hand right away. There, there's about uh, almost a half second that goes by before he shoots that out. So how can you control something like that? Previously, you only had a way of doing that in the animation system. Um, let's open up this guy's animation values here. And in the past, you could come into your animation window and you could go to like your shoot animation, for example. And you could come in here and define uh, an animation event through this little tiny icon. You had to know it was there, and then you had to know to look for them. And if you ever got an error, it was forever trying to track it down. So I never was a big fan of the approach of essentially calling a code event at some point in time on the timeline here. You can do it. Again, that's what this little icon is for. Um, but now we've got these animation state behaviors. And also, you could call a code event here. It still didn't tell you how far your animation was from being done. So now we have these behaviors. If I look at my shoot behavior, what I'm doing here is this is all the stuff, everything you're looking at here beneath shoot is from the Unity standard asset. That was a third person controller. Um, these were all the built-in animations. The, the beauty of this animation system is it's retargetable. If you have a humanoid character, like a zombie, an elf, or a vamp kid, anything that's a humanoid shape, you can take any other humanoid animation and apply it to that character. If I want this guy doing the Gangnam Style dance, or a zombie walk, or shooting an arrow, I can buy all those animation files or make them. Uh, there's there's third-party systems you can buy. You can write your own. There's ways of using the Kinect to actually record yourself doing your own animation files. There's so many different ways of doing it, or you can download them off the net. Is that where you do your zombie thing in front of your I don't know Kinect. what you're talking about in front of my Kinect. Yes. I practice at home. That's right. <laughs> um, so you can take any of those animations and apply them to these characters. So these were already set up for me, and I was able just to, instead of Ethan, use the vamp kid and swap it out just by changing the model. And it just worked. Nothing complicated there. Now, I want to shoot, but when I shoot, I want to know that at a certain point in time to fire off that projectile. And so if I look at this code here, what you can do now is on any animation, you can add a behavior. So if I open up this behavior, now again, it's not on a game object. It's on these little animation blocks. And if you're brand new to the Unity animation system, we're going to cover what these blocks are in a second. But if you're already familiar with Unity's animation, then you'll be like, "Oh, that's a that's this is something new. I don't I don't understand. I didn't know that was there." That's a huge thing too. It's really cool. And so what I'm going to do in this once this loads up is, after 0.4 seconds elapses on my animation, I'm going to then in turn say, "Hey, at this point in time, I want you to fire off a projectile." So let's let this code load up, and I will show you the goodness in the code. Code goodness for short. Code goodness. CG. CG. <laughs> it's getting thick in here. You know, we are working on uh, making the uh, state machine scalable, so you can zoom in and out. I was going to ask you that earlier today, yes. actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here, uh, there's a couple different methods. If you create a new state, um, an, a state machine behavior, that's what uh, this inherits from. It will create you some default ones, uh, methods by default. You can see the ones that are commented out here. Uh, so Unity will generate that code template for you, then comment it out. I'm just using uh, on state enter and on state update. So in other words, when something triggers off my shoot animation state, and I'll sh for the, those folks that are new to this, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, as soon as I enter that animation state, I'm saying, hey, we have not shot our projectile yet. Shot is false. Now. On state update gets repeatedly called each update frame uh, from the time you enter to exit. So you enter your state, you constantly call on state update, on state update, on state update. Your animation is processing. Every time I process that, I'm saying um, if my time that's elapsed essentially is greater than 0.4 seconds and I have not yet shot my projectile, go ahead and call that code to shoot. That code is on my, um, my vamp kid game object. And it just simply instantiates 
a projectile. Uh, we're not using new for folks that are new to Unity um, and wondering why don't you just new up an object, you know, var projectile equals new something. We're not doing that in Unity. When you want to instantiate a game object, you use instantiate. Fast typer. <laughs> So we're going to essentially just call that shot method, and that's it. So one of the power of having these state machine behaviors is that we can say, hey, at some point in time, do method x, do method y. We know when we've entered the state, and, we, and now we know when we have exited the state. And for folks that have dealt with the Unity animation system, this was a long requested feature. This yeah. was a little bit painful to do previously. Um, all right, now let's look at the basics of the animation system and some things that were added here. And what Mark had just mentioned is I can't scale this window out. Uh, I can shift spacebar on any Unity window and expand it. So I can have a little bit more real estate here, but I can't zoom in and out. Let's go ahead and create a new one here. I've got a, a really uh, template scene that we can rip through on this. Scenes, we'll do uh, zombie animation. I have this zombie, and when I click play, it's going to go to my game tab which I don't have any way of exploring my world yet, which is perfectly OK for this demo. I'm just going to switch back to my scene and just notice that my coin's not spinning, and this guy is not doing anything. Now, Matt created animations uh, for the zombie, and I can find those in here under my characters, zombie. And we have a zombie anims. And in here, we can look at all the zombie animations and preview them. Zombie death, zombie attack, zombie rise. So all the animations there. And what we can do is, in our animator, we need a new, anim uh, a new animator. And what we're going to do here, let's create a new on my zombie. I'll show you it from scratch here. We're going to add a new animator. What avatar? This essentially tells you how the bones are configured in this guy, how we're going to map animations to this guy. And we're going to select our. Zombie avatar. How do you know what an avatar is on when you bring in a model and you look at that particular model? Um, you can configure the avatar for that particular model on the rig, configure, and it just brings up a default window that shows you the T pose for that guy. Let me save all my changes here. Configure. You can see kind of the humanoid form there, and it'll tell you if things are out of whack. Everything here looks good, so I'm going to actually get out of this. And let's go back to what I want to show you at hand here is how to use kind of the animations here. So our scene has, let's go back to one second here. All right, so back to our zombie guy. We've added an animator, and we're going to look at what this requires in a second. We've pointed it to an avatar. Again, these avatars are just configured when you bring these, um, these models into Unity. Anytime you want to do 3D, you have to configure an avatar. Uh, when you bring in most things from the asset store, it's there by default. It's typically not something you have to worry about. But we're saying for our animations, we're going to use this zombie avatar. In other words, this how, how his bones are configured. Next, we need an animation controller. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create a new uh, animator controller. And I'm going to call that zombie move, and then just assign that guy right here. And apply root motion you can use if you want to move the object through the world without having to write the code to move that object through the world. Now I'm going to click on my controller. So again, all I've added was this animator component. Open this guy up, and we'll notice there's a couple new things here. The exit is off the scene by default, so you have to watch out for that. We have the ability here to say, hey, when you enter, uh, when this guy starts up, what's our default animation going to be? And so we say entry to some default state, idle we'll use for example. And then we can transition from any state to another animation and exit. Let's look at make a lot more sense once I do it. I'm going to take my animations here. Let's take idle, for example. Drag and drop. Boom. Play. You can see, you can tell by the light here, he's idle. He's hanging out. He's chilling out. If I highlight my zombie, and come over here, I get this real-time mode, and it shows me that I'm just running through my idle animation. All I did was I dragged that animation up into here, and it became the default animation. So again, on my zombie, I have an animator controller, has this little graph here, and I just dragged an animation file up into there. 
Now, what about when we want to make this a little bit more complex? I've got all these other animations here. So let's go ahead and do uh, walk, for example. And let's do attack. And let's do death. Maybe rise. And let's say I want any of these to be called at any point in time. So I could be in the middle of idle, and then I want to transition to one of these. Now, previously in Unity, you would have to go like this, and then say, you know what, from walk, I want to go here. There were a couple different ways of doing this, but we have now, let me undo that, undo, 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 delete. <laughs> All right, what we can do now is we can say from any state, we're going to go into walk. So we're making a transition to walk. Let's maximize this. And from walk, once we're done playing walk, we're going to exit. And that will just bring you back to idle by default. That's our default animation. That's why it's orange here. Uh, when some trigger becomes true, we're going to attack. And when we're done attacking, we'll exit. And when something becomes true, we're going to play death and exit. And when something comes true, we'll rise. Well, what when I say something comes true, what do I mean? Dreams. <laughs> dreams come true. I define parameters here. So I can say that when a Boolean value called walk becomes true, we'll go to walk. Um, attack is a one-time operation. In other words, when I'm walking, I'm typically walking for a while. Like a zombie, apparently. A zombie, yeah. yeah. The zombies are slow. They're going to walk for a while. Attack, that's like a once and done thing. So I'm going to say a trigger. It's like Think of it as a one-shot Boolean. Um, in other words, when I set this value, this trigger, to attack 1, it will trigger this off. Now, the naming convention doesn't matter here, and I'll show you how this links up in one second. Let's do another trigger for death. Basically, the difference there is a Boolean stays on. You have to tell it to turn tell off. Tell it to turn off. On, as off, soon as you consume update. that value, it automatically goes back to false again. The first time you use it, boom, goes back to false. You don't have to worry about setting its state true false. Uh, and then we'll do rise. All right, now how do we use these values? You actually have to click on the arrow and say when walk becomes true, we're going to walk. Go down to attack. Now, attack is a trigger. It doesn't have true or false. It's just when attack is triggered, we're going to do that animation. And death, when death is triggered, and these are one, uh, one line of code you can call that, and rise, let's do the same thing here. Rise. All right, save all that. Now, I can pop this window out, because we can debug this. Let's get a bigger view here, like that. There we go. Run that. Switch back to my scene view. All right. I am currently on idle. Now, if I walk, wow, look at that. He's kind of funky. <laughs> He's walking in circles. And you'll find sometimes you have to kind of fiddle around with some of these, and you have to say, you know what, this value, play that again. <laughs> He's walking around in circles. Something that root motion can do for you, too. So there's a guy walking. This, uh, sometimes the animations don't cycle up exactly on top of each other here. Let's turn off um, root motion. The other thing that you, you'll find when you get animations from various places on the net, or you make them yourself, so you notice, right, we had a different behavior here by turning off root motion. You can sometimes look at your animation files. Let's dock this window back in here. You can dock, uh, click on our, this guy right here. And we look at our animation properties. And you'll find these values will cause you infinite headaches at times. <laughs> Sometimes you'll import something, and this will be acting weird. And you're like, what's going on here? It's because the root transform position is based on center of mass as opposed to original. And it all depends on how the designer made it to how you consume it. The important takeaway is if you have animations and they're acting really strange, come in here and check these values on the actual model itself. Um, it's hard to go through a full discussion now on what these all mean because it depends on what the designer wanted to do, if you're using root motion. Uh, but as a kind of a beginner tip, if something happens, check these out here. So let's play that again and just uh, let's revert that. I want to use that value. We'll play that. 
pop this out one more time. Let's do death, and hope we can do death over and over again. Notice, it's a one shot, so I triggered off by clicking that, 